work it, Charles? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I want you to meet the folks who are going to work with us in this picture. That's Miss Evelyn Knapp. How do you do, Mr. Jones? How are you, Miss Knapp? Mr. James Cagney. How are you? How do you do? Mr. Donald Cook. How do you, How you do? do? And Mr. Tony Bushel. I think you know Tony. Hello, Don. Tony. Hi, Bob. Good to see you. Thanks. Folks, this is Mr. Keeler. Toby How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Keeler? Tony. Hi, Abby. Where's our director? Late. He's not here yet. Well, that's fine. I need a little practice anyway. Oh, good. Uh, Who is that? Louise Fazenda. She's in the cast, oh, yeah. too. <laughs> Hello, everybody. What are you doing? Louise. Huh? Meet Bobby Jones, Miss Fazenda. But, Mr. Jones! Oh, I'm thrilled to meet you. You know, I brought all my things with me. We are going to play, aren't we? Well, I don't know. I was just going to practice a little bit. Oh, that's all right. We've got to do something about that. Now, Mr. Jones, I have trouble, you see, on a... Uh, in the middle. What do you do? Louise, if you don't mind, we came here to see Mr. Jones practice. Oh, pardon me. Yes. Well, go, go ahead. But Louise, dear, you're supposed to be quiet. Oh, well, I won't say a word. Just go ahead. Right. Oh, oh, I hit another one. Hit anything. Now, Bobby, before we were interrupted, Jimmy and I were just wondering how you felt about practice. You know, um, most fellows just like to play all the time, and, well, we wondered if you believe in a whole lot of practice. Yes, I do. And the right kind of practice is just as interesting as playing. I never go on a practice tee unless I have a definite purpose in view, some correction to make. And I continue only so long as I can keep my mind on what I'm doing. And that sort of practice is never tiresome, and it's the only kind that does any good at all. Mr. Jones, I noticed when you played that mashing niblick shot that the ball broke from right to left, had a little hook on it. Will that kind of shot stop just as quickly as one played the other way from left to right? Well, Yes, it will, for all practical purposes, whenever I'm able to take anything like a full swing with a club. Sometimes, on a very short shot, when it is necessary to stop the ball very quickly, I lay the face of the club off a bit and cut across the ball slightly. But I find, with every iron club, for a shot longer than the one I'm playing now, I have better control if I play the shot from right to left, because it doesn't fly so high. Oh, Bob, you said just now that uh, when you go out to practice, you always have a definite purpose in mind. Would you mind telling us some of the things you have trouble with? Well, with the medium irons and short irons, the trouble that I have most often it's failing to cut my wrist at the top. I'm inclined sometimes to hang on to the club a little bit too tightly so that I don't get that nice rhythm. Now, you watch my hands when I play this shot. You see what I mean. I like to be able to feel the head of the club all the way through the stroke. Unless I use my wrist freely, my swing loses all of its snap and I have neither power nor control. Now, with the longer irons, number one, for example, I sometimes find myself snatching the club back, take it back so fast that it upsets the balance. Now, I find that I always hit the ball better if my backswing is very leisurely, almost lazy, like this. Now, watch these two shots at actual normal speed. At the top of the swing, you'll observe that for a fraction of a second, there's a pause as the club changes direction. The same swing in slow motion, 
shows how a slow backswing lessens the danger of starting downward too quickly. It is very necessary for the player to be perfectly balanced when he starts hitting. Of course, Tony, I don't mean to say that the things I've been discussing apply only to the particular clubs I've been using. I'm simply trying to show you where these faults are most likely to crop up in my own game. Now, whenever I find myself hooking badly with a wood club, a spoon, I can usually trace the trouble to my left side. I find it resisting the stroke instead of actually leading it through the ball, like this. In this swing, the turn of the hips is free and ahead of the rest of the stroke. Whenever the left hip locks itself or refuses to move out of the way, it keeps the left side and arm from pulling through as they should. I like to feel that I'm hitting a backhand blow with the right hand catching up with the left on that impact. Now, Mr. Jones, I notice that your backswing is very long. Do you think there's any danger for the average player in swinging back too far? I, um... No, I don't. I think the average golfer would be far better off if he would forget all about overswinging. Now, what's the length of my swing with the driver? The trouble with most of them is that they don't take the club back far enough. Now, I like the backswing to be long enough so that I have plenty of time to get speed on the club head before it meets the ball without giving me any tendency to jump at it. When I go out for length, I swing the club back well beyond the horizontal. I like to let the backswing go just as far as it can go comfortably. The full turn of the hips and the elevation of the hands give me full command of all the power I possess, and I have plenty of time to reach full speed by the time I hit the ball. If my backswing were shorter, I should find it more of an effort to strike with the same force. Hey, Bob, the gang here have been wondering why you sort of cock your head to one side and seem to look at the ball out of your left eye. Is there any particular reason for that? Well, I guess the thing that I've done naturally all my life. I don't look at the ball with either my left eye or my right eye. I don't stare at any particular spot on it. I'm merely conscious of its location. I think that the position of my head is more important than any consideration of the left eye. Because if you'll notice my swing, when I hit the ball, my head is back this way. I simply find it easier to swing the club with my head in that position. Good oh, morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Marshall. Sorry to be late. Well, let's go to work. All right, what's the first setup? Uh, long shot of Bob on the front of the tee there, speaking yeah. for the driver. Okay. Yep. Hi, Tony. Let's go, boys. Work over here. Yeah, Tony. Thank you. Mr. Marshall, I didn't have time to get my breakfast. Should I get it now? Well, you better wait, George. <laughs> Something wrong? Are we going to play now? Yeah. You're going to play right now, Louise. All right. Okay. <laughs> uh, now, you've got to hit a ball on the first scene. Yeah. So I want you to take this little thing and go right over there on the practice fairway and just try hitting it for a little while. All by myself? Yeah, and we'll call you when we're ready now for you. Now, don't you look, because no, I huh? get nervous. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't it look lonesome all by itself? Now, don't look now. Hopeless. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> my hips again, my hips. I'm sorry, Bob. I thought Louise knew something about the game. You don't mean golf, do you? No cracks. There. Sorry, but we'd have to go get new stories. Where are you all going? Are we going to play anymore? Why 
watch for the next episode, A Round of Golf, in the Bobby Jones series, How I Play Golf, coming to your theater soon. <laughs>